Geotrig lesson one. This is day four and hopefully the last day of this. Hopefully not too much left after. So what we're going to do is we're given that angle six is 55 degrees and the two lines are parallel. You know they're, well, they didn't tell you because they don't have it marked. But we're going to assume that these two horizontal lines are parallel to each other. Label all the remaining angles. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to write 55 because that's what 6 is. But if I know that 6 is 55, then 7 is also 55. 55. Why? Is that? Vertical angles, right. That means what is also 55 and tell me a reason why. Uh, three, and three. 3. Why 3? We had a name for that yesterday. Alternate interior angles. And two. Alternate exterior. No, well, alternate two can be an alternate exterior to what angle then? Seven. 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 Or it's a vertical angle to three. It's also a corresponding angle to six. Corresponding, we didn't get to yet. The corresponding angles, guys. Corresponding angles is if I could take an angle and pick it up. So if I cut this angle out along the lines, pick it up and drop it right here on 6, could you tell the difference? No. No. Those are corresponding angles. And that means that 1, I'm going to change the colors, that 1, 4, 5, and 8 are all the same. And how do we find that angle again? Yeah, it's 180. So track 55, and all of them will be labeled with 100, 25. 25. I'm not going to put them all in there, but that would be 125. Okay, given that lines L and M are parallel and N is a transversal, find all the angle measures. Well, just find, let's just find X. So... We just talked about this. I just put a name to it. So 4x plus 10 and 8x minus 25 are what again? I just I just gave you guys a definition or what they did. Corresponding. And corresponding angles are the same. So what should I do with those? Set them equal to each other. Equal to each other. I think you guys can solve that, yes? Do I move 4x or 8x? Which one am I moving? Oh, we're going to move 4x. We're going to move 4x. Would it be bad to move the 8x? I mean, you could do it. We could do it, but the rule of thumb is always move the smaller variable because they're more likely to have a positive result. So... Subtract the 4x, subtract 4x, which also means at the same time, I'm going to add 25. And therefore, this is gone. These are gone. What's 10 plus 25? 35, 35 equals 4x. And to finish it off, I will do what? Divide. By 4. Four. So that means x is equal to 35 over 4. I don't think that reduces, does it? That is your answer. This book is full of answers like this. If you're the person who has to jump on their calculator and they'll have to give me a decimal answer for that, don't do it. Leave it as an improper fraction. Because if you go to a decimal, then you guys are really thinking, oh, I don't mean, what, what does this really mean, right? And so I'll leave it as an improper fraction, and that is the answer. So I ins inserted this one last year, I think, because some people had questions on simplifying these. This is old stuff. This is stuff that they're saying, hey, you should know. So how do I divide and simplify those? Fraction divided by fraction. First of all, it's a fraction divided by fraction. So what do I do? Or what can I do? Or should I do? Flip the second one and turn it to multiplication. Correct.
Right, but we're dividing, so we have to flip it to turn it to multiplication. So it's n squared plus 10n plus 9 all over. Now, we got to simplify. Now these are fractions, they're multiplied, so I could technically multiply the top to the top, the bottom to the bottom. But that means that's a trinomial times a trinomial, which means I'd have to distribute three different times. Nobody wants to do that. Maybe there's a different way. Because there's stuff all over here. What can I do? Take out what? The n squared over the n squared. Ooh. Mm. It was told that we should cancel the n squareds. Unfortunately, you can't. The only way, guys, that we are allowed to cancel things is if everything is multiplied and divided. We have pluses and minuses between them. So therefore, I can't. So is there a way to possibly change it to multiplication? It's a big F word. Foil. The other one. Oh, there's another one. Factor. <laughs> yeah. So we have to factor all of these guys. Notice all of them are the simple factoring. Okay, this is the simple factoring. The bottom one, guys, I'm not doing two brackets because it's not a trinomial. It's only got two terms. So, how do I factor n squared minus 5x minus 24? What am I trying to do? Where did I get the x? Where did I put? Oh, that is supposed to be an n. Let me fix that. Okay, the x was fixed to an n. Okay, what, guys, how do I factor? It's, notice that a is equal to 1. That's the easy ones. Those are the nice ones. What's the rule? Find the factors of C that add up to B. Or, guys, the factors of the last number that will add up to our middle number. So, what are the factors of 24? 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8. Hey, that's the 1. Guys, I'm going to write down n and n, because eventually these have to be foiled back together to get our original answer back. And n times n is the only way to get n squared. We also know that I will have an 8 and a 3. The question is, what are the signs? Have to get to a negative 5 when added together. It's negative 8 and plus 3. Do the same thing for the other two. N, N. Factors of 9 that give me 10. Oh, wait, no. 1 and 9. And they're both positive. Next one on the bottom. Ooh, n plus 1 and n minus 8, I do believe so. That last one that I left blank so far, I can't do what I just did with the other three. What do I have to do there? Which is technically the first thing I should always do in factoring. Oh, you can, it doesn't, it, just one parentheses. Yeah, it's going to be one set of parentheses. Right, I'm going to pull a 6n out. What is that called, though? Elimination. Not elimination. Factoring out a monomial. Greatest common term, right? Greatest common factor. If I pull or take out 6x, 6n, sorry, what would be left? n plus, n plus 9. 9. Oh. Now... Now, guys, you should notice that I got n minus 8 times n minus 3, or n plus 3, times n plus 1, times n plus 9. We will in a second, yep. And on the bottom, they're all multiplied as well. We've now just set up the fact 
They're all multiplied and divided, so now I can do the canceling. So I've already been hearing people talk, and they said, you can cancel the n minus 8s. You can cancel the n plus 1s and the n plus 9s. And all you have left on top is? N plus 3. Over? 6n. And guess what? That is your answer. I love this. Area and sectors of circles. So, remember, to find the area of a triangle, we use what again? Base times height. How do you determine the area of a circle? Pi times radius squared, or pi r squared. What does area even mean? I'm not going to fill it in, but we'll talk about it. It means the amount of 2D space it takes up, right? Mm -hmm. Length and a width, basically, is what it comes down to. Um, how do you find the perimeter of a circle? Ooh, perimeter. What is perimeter again? The outside, right. So, P perimeter equals 2 pi r. 2 pi r. 2 pi r perimeter means distance around the circle. You guys can fill that in. And a sector of a circle looks like, I heard someone else say it before, a piece of pie. You can fill that in, right? <clears throat> pie chart, right? So it looks like a piece of pie or a piece of pizza. The sector is the red thing. Okay. Angle C, well, guys, looking at part five there, what do you think angle C is about? How many degrees? Turn your head a little bit sideways. What do you think it looks like? 90. It looks about 90 degrees, right? What are your ideas then for finding the area of that shaded slice called a sector? What would be some of your ideas of figuring out the area of that red part of the circle? Well, actually, for some reason, I don't have it on here, but how many degrees are in a circle? There's 360 degrees in a circle. 360. Guys, it looks like it's 90. Can I make some connection that the angle looks like it's about a fourth of the circle being used? How much of the area is going to be used? A fourth of it. So, do you think there's a connection between the number of degrees of a circle and how much of the circle is being used? So I propose that if you take the degrees and divide it by 360, it'll tell you the percentage that you're using. Like 90 divided by 360 is 0 0.25 or 25%. Do you guys agree with that? Mm -hmm. So whatever this is, if I told you the area of the circle is 4, then the area of that little slice or that's a pretty big slice, is what? 25%. 25% of 4, and that is 1. If it's 100, now it's 25. Oh, okay. So the area is the degrees, the number of degrees, divided by 360, and multiply that by the pi r squared, or a.k.a. the area. It's setting up the percent used times how much are you of what you're using. You're going to see that come up again when we talk about the um, arc length. The arc length is the side of the picture there. So the last problem, guys is I want you to find the area of the shaded region. It says, this is the problem on page 25, number 23. 
It's a large circle that has two small circles that are fitting just perfectly inside of it. And they're cutting out part of the larger circle. What of the remaining circle's area is left? This is not a straightforward question. As in, I don't have a certain equation, and I don't have the ability just to plug stuff in and just spit out an answer. This takes dedicated thinking. Think about it. Does anybody have a proposed idea on how to attempt this problem? Then, yeah. Yeah. Right. Did everybody hear that? I'm going to find three areas of circles. I'm going to solve for the larger one and two smaller ones, find their areas, and then subtract them. <clears throat> Interesting. Now, can everybody see that I think we all can assume that one of them has a radius of 15, and the other one is? So we got the small ones. That's easy. I think most of us can see that's pretty straightforward. So if I wanted to find the area of both of those, I just plug them into the right formula. I'm going to write the formula above so we all know what it is. It's all pi r squared. So what would the 15 circle look like? That would be pi times 15 squared. And then I'm going to subtract. I'm going to subtract that too. But I'm going to subtract pi times 6 squared. Well, I think we all know what 6 squared is. What's that? 36, so 36 pi. Do we know what 15 squared is? Uh, it's one of those things you better... It's not 125, but 225. 225. Okay. I would start to remember these guys at least up to about a perfect square of at least 20, maybe even more. It's going to make your life a little bit easier. So I, within 5, you know, maybe 30 seconds, we were able to tear it apart and have half of the information. The only thing we're lacking right now is the big one. How do I know what this radius is? It's whatever is left over. Left over. Interesting. Yeah. You know. Boom. I don't know if we picked that up. I don't think we picked that up on the, on, the, on the iPad. This is what Danielle has said. I'll change colors so we can see it. Okay, guys. This is the center. From here to there is how far? Danielle, let's be quiet. From the middle to the other end of that same circle is? 15. It's already there. From this circle to the end is? And six. So the diameter of this circle is all the way across, which is 15 plus 15 plus 6 plus 6, which says that it would be a diameter of 42. We don't use the diameter. We use the radius, which then is r equals 21 or it's 15 plus 6, a radius of each one, because the circles are touching. I'm starting to see that now. Had to do a little bit of thinking on that one. But we now know that I will use this as pi times 21 squared. What is 21 squared? 400... 441 pi. I'm going to subtract the 225 pi and subtract the 36 pi. They're all like terms that end in pi. So my answer will be pi, not some decimal. What's 441 mm -hmm. minus 225 minus 36? Take your calculator, though. 180 exactly. So the answer is 180 pi.
Now, I don't have units on my diagram. I don't know what it is in the book, but let's just say that they were all meters. So the label on this would be 180 pi meters what? Squared, because it's area. Your homework, lesson one, day four, is page 12, 22 through 23, 26 through 29. Have a fantastic day.